As a chair, committee member, or coach, when I receive a dissertation proposal, the first thing I read is the problem statement. Now, why is that? Out of all the important information writers are giving me, why start here? The answer is that the problem statement is the true north of your proposal. You will use it as a compass to guide your search of the literature and writing of the proposal. The problem statement is situated within the introductory chapter, and it's often the first section of writing that clearly identifies the problem you intend to investigate. And this section of writing is so important, I want to take just a moment to help you conceptualize what a research problem actually is. Quite often as researchers, we have burning questions and we want answers. Our curiosity is a wondrous gift, but a question is not a problem. A research interest is not a problem. A research problem is well-defined, specific, theoretical or practical in nature, and it outlines an issue, something that's wrong or needs to change. Ultimately, your research is meant to contribute in solving the problem or expanding knowledge in some way. So it's important to articulate the problem in ways that help your reader understand and care about it. Enter the problem statement. There are three components to the problem statement. The context, knowledge gap, and significance. The context tells me what the current situation is and what's wrong with the current situation or what needs to change. This isn't where you go into detail all about how we got here. Your focus is on the here and now. What is the situation today? Next is the knowledge gap. The knowledge gap is framed by the context and significance. This frame sets the terms of your study so you don't go astray. In order to write the knowledge gap, you need to be well versed in the scholarly discourse on your topic, but you also need a starting point. So develop a knowledge gap statement now and go back and revise it as you read and analyze articles on your topic. Finally, you need to state the significance of the problem. This portion of the problem statement should give me a sense of urgency so I care about your research. This is where some heavy hitting statistics can really come in handy to tell the reader about the scope of the problem and its consequences. This early draft of the problem statement is meant to guide you as you search the literature and develop your lit review. And it's for your eyes only, so there's no need to make it perfect right now. Use it to focus your efforts. Keep your problem statement handy so you can access it at any time. Read it before you sit down to write or search the literature. Read, read, read the problem statement again and again, and allow it to evolve as you learn more about your topic. And refer back to it if you're stuck, and ask yourself, is what I'm about to do clearly related to my research problem in some way? And importantly, layer in new information as you learn about your topic. By the time you write your literature review, you will have an arsenal of information at your fingertips. You will be that much closer to becoming an expert on your topic. This problem posing mentality is a cornerstone of a researcher's identity. We pause it, we learn, we found out where we were wrong and right, all in service of solving relevant problems in the world. In the lessons that follow, we will guide you through the process of developing an early draft of your problem statement to help you focus your search of the literature and writing of the lit review. We'll help you go back and revise that problem statement as you learn more about your research topic. We'll help you think through each of these three components of the problem statement so you can feel confident that you're putting forth a well-reasoned, credible argument that demonstrates the need for your study. Let's do this.